So let's keep moving at some pace. Uh, it's my great privilege and, and pleasure to be introducing Matthew Bailey next. So Matthew James Bailey, uh, recognized maven in IoT, innovation, smart cities, and of course, AI. His leadership is acknowledged in governments, private sector. He's a sought out advisor, consultant, keynote speaker, and author, something he'll be letting us know about tonight. Uh, he's met with incredible people, that he's uh, spent time with Steve Wozniak, Sir David Attenborough, uh, Professor Stephen Hawking, as well as Prime Ministers, Ministers, Under Secretaries of G7 countries, and so on. Uh, he can be found at matthewjamesbailey.com. He's the founder and CEO of AIethics.world, and it is my great pleasure to be welcoming you here to MKAI, Matthew. Great to be here. Thanks, everybody. Um, before I share my slides, um, I'm going to be focusing on uh, the data disclosure aspect for this evening. And I'm going to share with you a poll that I put out on LinkedIn this week. And the question was, do you think that business and government should provide better transparency on how they use their data? And out of the 40 votes, 95% said yes, more visibility, please. So I think that data disclosure is an important thing. And... Um, Okay, so, so, so let's, uh, so let's uh, play um, and let's start the presentation. Um, just a minute, let's go with this. Okay, so you can find out more at AIethics.world. Um, we've been going about six months. We've, uh, we're in six, we've influenced six continents, uh, loads of cities, loads of languages. Um, there's so many different podcasts and videos up on our website. Um, and you'll find them very unique. Uh, Pamela, who's, who's on here, um, is also part of our team. You can follow me on Instagram at the AI Guru or Twitter. You can follow me on Facebook. And also our YouTube channel will be doing a big launch very shortly. There's lots of content on there um, with one of India's former tech billionaires. So do check that out. Um, okay, just a minute. I need to be able to pull this. Uh, I've just published Evolutionary Ethics for Artificial Intelligence. Um, and uh, this is available. You can, you can see where it's available on AIethics.world, on Amazon, Google Play, uh, Barnes & Noble, or you can buy a special edition. And I wanted to share with you, we're about inclusivity. We're about empowering citizens, businesses uh, to innovate their future and also governments as well. And this is a brand new approach to uh, artificial intelligence that simply has not been revealed before. It's a brand new set of frameworks with practical guidelines to bring the evolution and advancement of the digital world, artificial intelligence and humanity itself into a new paradigm, what I call World 3.0. The foreword is written by an AI guru from Intel that has published about 170 patents in AI edge compute and also data center technology. And uh, you'll see a few photographs here. Uh, John Milton, who's like the Sir David Attenborough, his great grandfather founded the uh, national parks in the US and John himself has founded national parks all over the world. The environment is so important to the future of humanity and therefore should also be important to how we leverage artificial intelligence. Uh, you'll, you'll see a lady that's involved with the SDGs, Patricia, and also Dan, a good friend of mine, that's a, a director of a multi-billion uh, set of research and innovation labs. And I put Charles Darwin on here because this is an advancement from Charles Darwin's, one of the greatest men's in history's view on evolution and ethics. He was the first man to bring this together. And so this really does bring technology and humanity into a new paradigm to evolve together. Um, and also people like ZD Net, who most of you know, are going to be featuring me very shortly, and also on Clubhouse and lots of other places. So do check out AIethics.world. There's podcasts and all sorts of events, and the blogs will blow you away what we're putting up there. And they're in French as well as English, so there we are. So today's keynote really uh, is about, is AI the new guru? And we're focusing on data disclosure, and that's where I'm focusing on. Um... So the question is, is AI going to be the destroyer of humanity or is it going to be a guru that liberates us beyond the challenges of today? And one of the important things to consider is this, is that, and this is a quote from the book, 
Data is the oxygen that gives artificial intelligence an understanding of its context and purpose. So I would invite all of you to consider how ethical is the oxygen or the data that you're using to train artificial intelligence. If your, if your oxygen or your data is unethical, then by fundamental logic, your AI is unethical. And we face that problem across the entire society. And I'm gonna share with you how we resolve this. So do consider as you're innovating artificial intelligence, the quality of the oxygen of your data. And look, we have 2.5 quintillion bytes of data being generated all over the world. That's a lot of oxygen for artificial intelligence. So uh, I just wanted to share with you brief of this slide and we'll move through them very quickly to get to the meat and bones of this. But this is uh, the, the world, this is a diagram that really shows where we're at today, which is the industrial mindset. Now I'm gonna explain briefly where the industrial mindset have got us today, what I call the world 1.0 reality, which is complete unethical in lots of ways. And there's all sorts of issues we're facing with the industrial mindset. And I'm gonna share that on the next slide. And so basically, as we start to, in world 1.0, start putting together uh, data ethics, national AI ethics standard, data, new data ownership models, deal with data stewardship and government uh, governance, and start to democratize innovation. This is really important. Cities, communities, cultures need to be empowered to innovate their future with artificial intelligence and not to be dictated by big tech, which is where it's going at the moment. So basically world 1.0 is where we're at, which is very, very kind of young in our AI ethics and data ethics and other kinds of aspects. And then as we start to evolve and advance and bring AI to, uh, ethics, data ethics and other things into play, then the world conditions transition us into, into uh, basically a new world reality, which is where we find balance again within society and artificial intelligence is a powerful ally. But to do this, we need an awakening. We need a new mindset. So let's just check in where we are today, okay? So I'm really pleased it's a UK uh, uh, initiative, uh, an event today, Richard, because I can talk about UK people that most people will know. So Sir David Attenborough, who's been on our TV screens for many, many years, has basically been indicating recently in his latest Netflix movie that really we're out of, we're, we're significantly out of balance with our environment and we're really close to a point of no return. We know if the environment flourishes, humanity flourishes. And so we have to start bringing a balance back to our environment. And that plays into the United Nations Sustainability Development Goals. We know the 17 of them. And that reflects how poor we are doing in this world reality. We have issues around poverty. We have issues around social inequity. We have issues around uh, uh, lack of uh, uh, stewardship with our environments and many others. Um, and so really, this is a reflection, the UN SDGs, of how poor we are doing in our leadership within society. And so change needs to happen. Um, human living itself has been, is a natural reflection of all the population that's come together with a different diverse aspects of their industrial progress has caused all sorts of issues, hasn't it, within society and also within our environment as well. And so this is just a natural symptom of the progression of humanity. And so we need to take stock and think about how do we advance beyond the challenges that we have today so that we leave a legacy we can be proud of for generations to come who are not beholden to the issues that we have today. And so what role can artificial intelligence play in that? We know very well that AI is starting to provide wisdom in society. One of the great things around the uh, AI that beat Lee Sedol in Go is a decision matrix that it, it created can be transplanted into other markets to improve their decision making. And I predict by 2035, which I was sharing with the US administration, uh, last week, there'll be no more middle management. AI will replace middle management. Uh, obviously, self-driving cars and things like that are going to be more and more popular as we start to address transportation issues. So AI obviously is going to be, is already very busy in self-driving, keeping us safe and other aspects as well. And we can dive into this another time. The other thing is AI is starting to do something quite interesting, which is voice interaction, which puts us at rest when we start to 
uh, interact with digital world. And this is important. Um, I have problems sometimes, my accent speaking to my car, which is a G, which is useless at understanding me. But basically voice interaction is an important step in AI because it starts to put us at rest. We're away from our screens. And so therefore that is where AI is actually heading to, is actually developing a self-actualized society where we're more at rest. But more of that a little bit later. Of course, I use the U call. So I'm going to talk about cricket, a hotspot and other things like that. Um, we have a really with social media and big tech. We've seen films like The Social Dilemma, which talks about the ethical awfulness and the, and the lack of cultural uh, diversity within uh, AI itself. And we, we all saw that horrible moment where one of the ladies uh, put on a white mask in order for the facial recognition software to recognize her, but didn't recognize the color of her skin and therefore couldn't identify her. This is really quite horrid, but it's symptomatic of how poor basically big tech has been in bringing facial recognition with value and diversity into society. And also we've looked at, and that's obviously part of the coded bias as well, the social dilemma is actually about the narrative and the echo chambers that will be in control with at the moment. So the question is, is AI going to be 42? The Hitchhiker's Guide's answer to the universe and everything. And that's yet to be decided, but don't panic. So this is where we really get to about uh, data disclosure. Um, we have a trust dilemma at the moment, don't we? Pew Research Center published a report in 2019 that basically 60% of Americans feel confused and feel lack of control over their personal information, which is reflected in the vote that we have. Quite frankly, we are sheep that are being harvested, and I'm sorry to be so direct about that. We know that data is the DNA of artificial intelligence. It drives its AI mindset. Without data, there is AI. And so if data itself is unethical, then so much AI itself be unethical. So we need to change the conversation around data ethics, which are part of AI ethics. So, um, we can look at um, the different types of poor AI de data ethics symptoms within a society, and no one's got this right yet, not even GDPR. But if we start looking at, um, sorry, just a minute, I've got a problem here. Um, I can't read my screen because the, uh, the, the, um, the picture is in the way. But basically is that with poor AI data ethics, there is no governance of the ethical quality of artificial intelligence, right? We don't know what data is being used to train its mindset. There is no ethical quality with the data that's being put inside AI. There, so effectively, we have schizophrenic AI deployed within a nation because there's no ethical quality in the data and measuring the ethical quality of the data being used for artificial intelligence. And so border, there is no border control. There's all sorts of different flavors of artificial intelligence based on the different data sets they're using within a nation. So a nation itself, every single nation, basically has schizophrenic artificial intelligence. And there's a lack of public trust. And this is the future of artificial intelligence. Because there is increasing uh, lack of public trust uh, around data, then this is a real issue for a democracy where really the people should be involved, empowered in innovating the future of artificial intelligence. And so there's no uneth there's unethical alignment within a democracy. But when we have strong AI data ethics, then effectively we're governing the ethical quality of the mindset of artificial intelligence. And so therefore we know the ethical quality of that mindset through governance and through compliance, through metrics and certification, at which point then we can start put, to put in a digital border control to have ethical AI programmed and trained by ethical data within a nation and then a nation's moving forward. And this is really important because what it can do, as the next slide will show, we can bring the public trust into innovating the future of artificial intelligence. How's this done? Through user agency of data, through AI data ethics and transparency, users have greater visibility on how the, uh, on their data is being used. They feel more comfortable. The public trust paradigm is bridged. And as such, there is an opportunity to open up domestic-wide data sets that are broader and deeper 
in order for AI to do well in society for every single person. And this is really, really important. Um, and so in the book, I talk about how to put literally uh, uh, ethics into the DNA of artificial intelligence. And I've tested this th thesis with OBEs in life sciences. Um, we also uh, have seen other kind of things, and I want to talk about digital body and personalized AI because this is coming. You've probably heard of digital Deepak Chopra or Chopra. And this basically is an avatar that's been trained. And also Will I Am's done this, and you can see it in the age of AI, where people are starting to actually try and create a digital version of themselves that can actually interact with broader audiences. And I think that's interesting. But the problem is these are very simple digital twins. And so there's no understanding of their life. But literally, it's a brittle experience, but there is context as they've been trained. Um, and one of the issues that Will I Am had was that this is going to live longer than me. I don't know how I feel about that. And that's interesting. Now, data is the DNA of your digital buddy. And at the moment, it is fractured amongst all these different systems that we have no transparency over. Data, and this is the big question that's coming, is an extension of the human sovereignty. As such, it's your digital self. And as such, you should own and have transparency and visibility over that data because it's your digital self, it's your sovereignty. And this is what this big conversation is gonna come. So today it's fractured. But if we unfracture it with proper AI data ethics governance, then effectively we can liberate the data that reflects your digital self to start to train your personalized AI. Now, this is really important, and this will happen as humanity advances into world 2.0, into world 3.0. As we start to train personalized AIs for the individual, then this digital buddy or digital angel or digital life guru will support you in a well-being and advanced lifestyle and human experience. And this is for every single citizen. Now, I'm not the only one thinking about this. And there's others that believe this is actually the path forward to the human destination where artificial intelligence itself actually becomes a life guide. And I think that's interesting because what it can do, it, it can take away all the issues of the digital world. It can manage it on your behalf. It can put you at rest. And it can actually help you to live a self-actualized life where you're thriving in your gifts, you're thriving in your passions. And it's going to be an interesting conversation as this progresses. Now, this is something I'd like to share with you because this is a world first. Alan Turing, who you're probably aware of, invented the Turing tests to actually determine whether an AI or a computing system was behaving like a human. And so therefore, I've done something very similar to AI data ethics, new Turing-like questions. And these are eight sets of questions that are ranked on bronze, silver, gold, and platinum, looking at all sorts of aspects around data ethics. And you can see I brought out some of the points on the right-hand side, things like visibility and transparency, source trustworthiness, uh, things like bias and other things like that. But there's two things, and this is all about user agency of data. But there's two things I want to uh, bring out. One is I believe that uh, data needs bias. Now, before you go and tweet and say Matt Bailey's saying that we need bias in data, let me just explain. It needs evolutionary bias. What does that mean? That our data should cater for all cultures and our diversity, all genders. So that is an evolutionary bias. It actually has bias where it supports all the citizen diversity within uh, a population or a particular demographic or a community in order for it to do well for every single citizen within that community or society or uh, democracy. And that is evolution bias because our intent is for everybody to do well. Now, the other thing is the environmental footprint. If we want to achieve a green nation, if we are serious about creating a harmony and a balance with our environment, and the data and the AI itself, from all its supply chain, from creation to actually delivery, we need to measure its environmental footprint, which includes the data centers, the supercomputer centers, the exascale center, supercomputing that's being built, and also the computing. If this has a low environmental footprint, then, a, then that doesn't show an evolutionary mindset or a commitment to the environment. And so therefore, we're going to start to see 
an environmental footprint associated with the quality of the, uh, with the data in terms of its environmental footprint quality. And we're going to start moving towards a platinum ranking where actually it is completely in harmony with the environment and its carbon and energy footprint will be very, very low, if not zero. And this is for those nations, this is for those businesses that really do have a mature mindset, that really do want to evolve and be relevant in the future. So basically, we have a, a set of Turing-like tests and we issue a, a AI data ethics medals to actually show how well are these different markets doing. And if you look at social media, bronze is actually really poor. It's a world 1.0 reality, not unawakened mindset, industrial focused, and basically it does not have ethics around its data or its artificial intelligence. And as you can see, social media is pretty shocking. But as we start to move in things like smart cities, which is about how do communities and uh, uh, citizens and local jurisdictions and stakeholders innovate their future together, then we're starting to see more platinum and gold emerge because they're moving towards more of a participative culture where AI is doing well for its citizens, doing well for its diversity and helping them to leap beyond the challenges of today. And I also put the UK healthcare service in there because that is actually what I believe is probably the best at the moment. Um, I know people on the board of, of UK uh, England and therefore I have a bit of insight, but actually the healthcare service itself is doing really well in terms of AI data ethics. And so really what we can have is a new British kite mark, a new standard for the United Kingdom, where basically AI data ethics classification as a model will be in place to certify the ethical quality of the AI and the ethical quality of the data that's being used to actually train it. And this is important if an, a nation wants to move up together holistically and actually doesn't want to be beholden to big tech and schizophrenic AI, because that's what we have today. So this is a real opportunity. And the book talks about this standard in a lot more detail, obviously. And it also provides a book for you to actually know how to do this. I'm just gonna talk about this briefly. If you want to know more about uh, evolutionary ethics and how it apply, how it advances AI ethics, how it actually advances artificial intelligence itself, then check out the YouTube and look at the Pakistan uh, talk I gave to uh, their number one research university who are actually going to be, I'm going to be teaching this to the first national university in the world. Um, so anyway, so culture is everything. And so it's really important that we actually start to put cultural principles within artificial intelligence. Things that actually say, these are our principles with our planet, either at a macro level or at a local level for AI to understand the challenges that it needs to help us to resolve. It also needs to understand our national and also our tribal and personal culture. Our personal culture changes on a daily basis. And so as such, AI itself, when it's a digital buddy, needs to be able to be able to cater and adapt to that. And more importantly, it needs to honor our humanity, have an understanding of our humanity. So Aristotle's virtues are in there and explain how to program AI with that. And also what's really important is it understands our sovereignty. So we bypass the technology singularity, theocracy that's coming out of Silicon Valley. And also it needs to understand our purpose and application, its purpose and application in society. So briefly, Professor Stephen Hawking, who I've met and is a wonderful, he was a wonderful individual, we had a great conversation, really just to ask us, we need to take stock now. We need to get our data disclosure right. We need to get AI data ethics right in order for us to be able to start to innovate forward mindfully the future and ethicalness of artificial intelligence in order to do really well within society. And I'm just gonna close very quickly because I'm probably one out of time. One is don't discount ancient wisdom in order to guide us forward with artificial intelligence. The Vedas have guided Nobel laureates in quantum physics, which is well documented. And the Vedas are a really interesting set of uh, 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 spiritual guidance uh, that I think will be helpful for AI ethics. They have, we are one family. The US constitution says we the people. Um, so don't have this because it's guided people that have changed how you see the universe. 
Aristotle is very important, I think, for his ethical virtues, and I talk about that. And don't forget, Democritus, two and a half thousand years ago, proposed the atom. So don't discount ancient wisdom, because I believe it can help. So where are we now? As we close? I think that ethical data disclosure and governance, and of course, I'm going to say with evolutionary ethics, because these frameworks are pretty cool, uh, can liberate artificial intelligence, because at the moment, it's not liberated to advance the United Kingdom into a thrilling world reality. So the question is, is your nation world 1.0 using an ethical oxygen to train your AI? Or are you wanting to have an ethical version of AI, an ethical oxygen, rich in ethics, to actually advance you into a world 3.0 paradigm? Okay, I'll stop there. What a powerful talk, I must say, Matthew. So, so powerful. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I think people can really view, you know, what, what can help us to liberate us in this, you know, growing tech that is happening each day and how we need to have diverse cultures involved into AI for it to have no biases into it, definitely. And, uh, you know, it has to become our guru. I know we have the ancient knowledge, but uh, moving on to world 3.0 and introducing us to how disclosure is important and what are the aspects that we need to uh, include, mainly, you know, considering the environment, the balance with the environment, the harmony that we need to build in the balance uh, it has to come in basically and the quality of data which people really forget that that is driving the ethical AI so the ethical data drives the ethical AI and also the governance around it building the digital borders definitely is so important Important and people having the protection and the awareness of what is happening around us in tech is going to smoothly transition us to the world 3.0. I believe that it will liberate us. I strongly believe in it. Thank you. Thank you so much. I think we will take two quick questions. I, I, I think uh, 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 Errol had raised her uh, hand. I think, uh, can we have uh, the question quickly, please? Sure. Thanks ever so much. Uh, thanks ever so much, John. So th thanks for brilliant chat uh, and presentation, Matthew. I won't go on. There's a great deal that I agree with, but please take the question in the open spirit. It's intended. Uh, as a long-term business person and IT fanatic, my question, my point is really, I don't agree that middle management will disappear. I think the framework is rather that human people, human agents, and digital agents, digital bots, robotic processes will combine in a strategic manner in new organizations, new businesses. So I don't think they're going to disappear at all. Uh, repetitive tasks, paper intensive tasks, a whole lot of things will, will go. My real point, my real concern is I probably see, attend and hear more AI ethics conferences and topics than all the rest combined. And that's a real worry to me because I think we're at great risk of serious risk of throwing the baby out with the bathwater. And by that, I mean, if we invented electricity today, would we be hyper obsessed with regulating it? The, most of the, there are already major severe penalties have been placed on American companies all the way through to South African companies for their AI implementation in unfair, discriminatory and other ways that we're well regulated, over regulated. I'm concerned about human personal freedom. That's the level at which I'd like to address the matter, not this top down, all strangling, approach that's my concern yeah and, and th th this is this is really really important because you you're not the only one concerned about this error it's the whole of the world um and this is why um so this is why i go down to the dna and invent new uh, what i call evolutionary ai that has sovereignty and uh, and our humanity program within it now what I mean is, it doesn't mean it feels humanity. I don't think that AI, AI will probably re, uh, obtain some kind of self-awareness. It may be different to our self-awareness, um, but the sovereignty piece is so, so important. And one of the things that I'm really concerned about, Errol, is there's so much inequity within society that can AI help the single mom to be able to manage her family better and to have time to actually maybe have another job, spend time just relaxing. How do we cater with the fact that 
uh, certain cultures um, have been oppressed uh, like the, the Native Americans within uh, uh, American society. How do we empower them to actually innovate their cultural principles within AI so they're advancing and not being pushed back? So your point around sovereignty is absolutely imperative, Errol. And I think the regulation is an interesting conversation, isn't it? Um, I think that we need to find a, a balance between regulation and governance and control over freedom to innovate. And that is going to be fine. Look, most of the AI ethics that I look at are really quite shoddy. They're coming at it with an industrial mindset. There's no understanding of the future of the humanity or even understanding about cultures. It's really quite limited and, that, and that's okay, but it, it kind of is getting in the way. I think we need, Errol, a people like yourself and others on this call that have a mature mindset in leadership in order to actually for us to go forward beneficially and not be limited by big tech. And I'm sorry to call that big tech, but I will, but funds the IEEE that funds all these organizations, that funds Deloitte and KPMG, that have an agenda for you not to have your data sovereignty back. And so this is why in the book, Errol, and I'll wrap up quickly, is I actually reveal how communities, cities, and regions can innovate without being beholden to the government or big tech. Um, because, yeah, right, yeah, all right, I'll stop there. <laughs> Sorry, sorry to interrupt. I think we have one more question uh, to do. So uh, let's jump in. Uh, uh, Dean had uh, the hand up. So Dean, can you just jump in and ask your question quickly? Before yeah, hi, hi, hi Matthew. And um, very inspiring, really inspiring. And you brought in all the topics that, that I've been uh, thinking about for, uh, for a long time. And we have been discussing so much in our, in our uh, group uh, too. Uh, so what uh, Sweden and Finland is doing, like uh, they are educating their people, the one percent uh, of the population, uh, to to make that understand that this this is really good thing actually because this is what we're gonna learn about humanity. This this AI, this tool that that we are creating and uh, creating by us and by humans. Uh, and what we we are doing, we are putting like all our past in the machine learning and that. Uh, uh, bring us really fast result that this is what we have been doing and this is not ethical actually so we should more work with it in an ethical way so 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 um, what we are doing here like in sweden we are building smart cities in Gothenburg and stockholm and we are having a really big discussions about it and a lot of like GDPR is like, it's, it's so little, it's not enough, it's so far away from, uh, from this, but it's a good start though. Uh, the, the discussions we are having that is it okay to force people to evolve to, the, to that new technology to understand humanity? And, and how much, uh, where, where, where are the boundaries? Like yeah, some people that they, they wanted to have it, like the technology is scary for them because of the cultures, because of the societies, because of how we are uh, grow up and how we know about you know, those things. If we don't understand codes, then it's scary. And um, uh, the Dean, you are phenomenal. This is you're opening up the next day of conference with this. <laughs> We've got yeah. no time, Dean. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're out yeah. of time. What do you mean, Matthew? Thirty seconds on Dean's comment. I'm sorry. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> no, it's great. I love it. We just run out of time. <laughs> first of all, it's a very prudent and wise comment. Uh, secondly, I think Dean that philosophy will start to become an important part of skill sets for any company and organization innovating AI in order to back cultural context. And thirdly, I think Finland are awesome. I are a model for the future because America itself is gonna hit disaster because it's unable to change its education system. And Finland is a great model, I think, for the rest of the world of bringing the general public into innovating AI. Wonderful question, next conference, fantastic. <laughs> thanks, thanks so much, Matthew. And I think this is a lot of food for thought for a lot of people uh, out here.